And the first question we have here is, what is very large? And it sounds trivial, but you know it from your own environments most likely. For one person, already 200 gigabytes are a large database, while for others, you would consider not even 10 terabytes as large. In our daily jobs, we see databases between whatever small size you can ever think of up to petabyte size databases. Um, the biggest one I've seen so far is in like more than 10 petabytes and such databases exist. And this is clearly right now very, very large. But I remember when I started at Oracle a while ago, we had this list of very large databases. And by that time, something like 50 gigabytes was considered very, very large already. So what means large today can be very small tomorrow already. So it depends. It really depends. Huh? What is large? You decide what is large. And large databases often are not strictly based, especially in these days, on Linux systems already. We still have a lot of these databases still on big Indian platforms like AIX, Spark, HPUX. More and more get moved over to Linux. This is the industry trend, I would say. We see this all over the place, especially when you go to cloud. Cloud vendors typically operate everything in Linux environments. But the Endian format may also decide for you which migration techniques are available. And we'll discuss this later. So what means big Endian and little Endian? It's basically a very old story about how the byte is ordered, either increasing or decreasing addresses. And like you see here in the example, John in a big Endian platform is in the, from the reading perspective, right order of the bits while the little Endian platforms have it in the reverse order. Speaking of big Endian and little Endian platforms, these are the platforms we have in the database world right now these days. And you have the big Endians and the little Endians, but we don't read them here. We basically, basically can shrink this down to the most common platforms on the big Endian side. It's AIX, it's HPUX Itanium, and it's Spark Solaris. While on the little Endian side, we mainly speak about Linux, Windows, and Intel Solaris even though Intel Solaris last release where it is available is Oracle Database 19C, but there are still Intel Solaris systems out there. In the database itself, you can find this mapping between platform ID, which will become very important later on when we speak about transportable table spaces and the platform name in V$ transportable platform. And sometimes the names are a bit strangely written, but you, have to stick exactly on these names when you need the platform name somewhere in the Oracle universe. What does that mean typically when we go, very common scenario, from a big NDNS platform to a little NDNS platform? So we have data or table spaces, and the table spaces, once they are moved over, need to be converted. So whenever we move something over, which is not a poor export, we need to do a conversion. And often this conversion happens then on a newer platform because the newer platform most likely has also the faster storage, more space available, more compute power. That's a typical scenario, something we see very, very often. I've seen only one little endianus to big endianus migration in the past two years. Another question we need to answer here, are you upgrading? Or to be more precise, are you going to a higher release? Is your source on 11.204? And are you not just moving from the big NDNS platform to the little NDN, but you also go directly into Oracle Database 19C, the release you should upgrade to? That's a question we need to answer. Then we need to understand your downtime requirements. 
the most common answer we receive when we ask about colleagues or customers is either as little as possible or close to zero. And then we have to ask again and say, what does it exactly mean? We, won't, we would like to understand your SLA. And believe it or not, even when people say close to zero, I've received tons of answers in one case, also like 24 hours. Because the customer was used to having a full week of outage for their previous migration five or six years ago. And the database is so big. So they said, hey, 24 hours, that's for us close to zero. We can do this on a Sunday when the business is down anyways and nobody's doing updates. So it really depends. But even if you approach somebody from Oracle or us directly, we need to understand, are you going to a new release? What are your exact downtime requirements? And also another very important question these days, especially since we have free user-created pluggable databases included in all license agreements since 19C, are you going to Oracle multi-tenant as well to the CDB architecture or not? You will see in the seminar, this makes a difference as well. So what is the best technique then? And people ask us and say, hey, Mike, my customer is migrating from AIX to Linux on this new brand new XRCC. What is the best approach? Hmm. We need to understand beforehand what the scenario looks like exactly. The questions we had on the slides before are the ones you need to ask internally as well for your projects. And then the best technique, it depends. Because there is no best technique usually. For a database upgrade in, in place, I can always tell you it's out of upgrade. No discussion on that. But if we do a migration of a very large database, there's no golden answer. First of all, we have to balance. And you may have seen that slide in previous seminars already, but it's still true. It hasn't changed since then. We need to balance between a simple solution but also meeting the downtime requirements. And typically, the tighter your downtime requirements are, the more complex the solution gets, unfortunately. 